Sacha Sota Daf Dalid contains the primary sugya discussing the length of time that stira is. That is the time that a woman who is warned not to be secluded with someone, if he is secluded with that individual, how long is it that it qualifies as stira and makes her into a suffix sota? The Gemara will quote a brisa, a contradictory brisa, a number of resolutions to the different problems between them, as well as different uh, explanations as to how much the shear of this time is. The Gemara will continue working through our last mission, discussing a number of other phrases that it says there. And then the Gemara will have some agarata about marriages, about hand washing, and about someone who's arrogant. So let's begin. We start with the brisa. The Brysa teaches us the length of time that Stira needs to be, defines it in two ways. First of all, what is the purpose? How is this length of time defined? And second of all, practically speaking, how much time is it? For that, we'll have a number of examples. And we'll have a second Brysa which contradicts a lot of the opinions here, and then we'll resolve them. So let's begin. So the Brysa says that, first of all, it starts with something which is not related. It says that when we talk about two types of testimony, as far as the Sota is concerned, we need the first, we need the testimony. The first testimony is that she was Stira, that she was alone with the man. And the second testimony is that she actually was Mitame, that she actually committed the Iser. Now, how much time, what is the length of time that Stira, that she has to be alone with him, to qualify for Stira? So the Mishnah define the Brisa defines the length of time as being long enough for three things. Kidei Tuma, Kidei Bia, and Kidei Hara. Enough time for her to become Tameya. Tameya means that she violates the Hara. Kidei Bia means to do the Bia act. Kidei Hara is the first step of Bia, that is to define Bia that we're referring to as being just the initial contact between the Avar. So the Gemara later, we'll skip ahead a bit, the Gemara later says, why do you have to say all these three things? Just say one of them. They're all repetitive. So the Gemara explains, we want to make a few things clear. First of all, it's only the actual physical action of Bia, the time it takes for that, not all the uh, pre-work that needs to be done to get her into the mood or to be agreeable to it. That's not included in that time. We don't take that into account, and the reason for that is simple, she may already be in the mood before they actually are secluded. And then the Bia has to, is just the Bia of Hara, just the initial contact, not the what we call Gemara Bia, not the complete Bia action. And the only way to get this across is to say all those three things. If you would only say Kidei Tuma, I would think that it means with the time of appeasement beforehand. If you would only say Kidei Bia, I would think it means the Gemara Bia. If you would only say Kidei Hara, I would think it means the time of the appeasement beforehand. The only way to get the full idea across is to say Bia and Hara. Those are contradictory. It can't be a full Bia as well as a Hara. And therefore, it's to teach me that it means more than just that. It also means the uh, time of the uh, without the appeasement itself. Together with the fact that it says Kidei Tuma, which it's if that would have been just that alone, it would have meant just the appeasement itself. Okay, now how long is this actual time? So the Bryce here brings a number of opinions. So the first opinion is Rabbi Yishmo defines that as the time it takes to walk around the tree. Rabbi Eliza says it's the time it takes to mix a cup of wine, that is wine has to be mixed with water. And Yeshua says it's the time to drink the cup of wine. Ben Azay says it's the time to roast one egg. Rabbi Kiva says it's the time to swallow an egg. Rabbi Kiva says it's the time to swallow three eggs, one after the other. And Beloza ben Yirmiya says it's the time to tie threads that have torn in a piece of cloth. Chanib ben Pinchas says the time that it takes for her to stretch her head to her mouth to take out something stuck between her teeth. Plimo, or as another Chacham says, the time it takes to reach your hand into a basket and take a loaf of bread. Now, there's no, although there's no proof to that, there is a hint to that. The Pasuk says, Ki ba'ad isha zona ad kikar lachem. It links isha zona to kikar lachem. Those two things are reloaded, are related in isha zona, and the time it takes to draw a loaf of bread out of the basket. Now, those are all the opinions here. Now, there's another brysa that lists very similar um, phrases, except that many of the opinions don't match up. The Tanaim who say one of the opinions here don't say the same opinions there, and therefore they end up being a contradictory. And the Gemara is going to try to explain how they all fit together. 
Um, it's important to note that the Gemara is assuming that all these different shiurim, these different ways of describing the time, are different lengths of time, and therefore everyone's arguing with everyone else in this b'risa. So let's see the next b'risa. The next b'risa also begins with that it's a shiur of kidei toma, kidei bia, kidei hara. And now the list is as follows. Um, the opinion, the first one is kidei chazara sadakel, which the Gemara at first assumes is the same thing as going around the tree. But here is Kodez Rabbi Eliezer's opinion, not Rabbi Shmuel's opinion. Rabbi Shua says the time it takes to pour the cup of wine. Rabbi Nazai says the time to drink it. Those are not the same as before. Those are reversed. Rabbi Kiva says the time it takes to roast an egg. Rabbi Yudam Sarah says the time it takes to swallow it. So the Gemara is going to work through the contradictions here. So first of all, we have the Gemara is assuming Chazar Sadekel and Hanakafa Sadekel both mean the time it takes to go around the tree. Except that in the first verse it's Rabbi uh, Yishmo, it's Rabbi Yishmo who says it, and this verse it's Rabbi Eliezer who says it, and if they're all arguing with each other, they shouldn't be saying the same thing. So how are they saying the same thing? So the Gemara answer is that they're not the same thing. Kedei HaKafa Sadekel means the time it takes to walk around the tree. Kedei Chazar Sadekel means the time it takes for the wind to blow a tree to a curved position, and then for it to return to its original position. Now, um, Ravashi asked, does that mean for it to return to its original position to snap back from the wind, or does it mean to return to being still, which takes longer, because after it snaps back, it probably rocks a little bit in the opposite direction. So the Gemara uh, uh, leaves that as a take, we're not sure how, if that, how much that means until it becomes still or until it just snaps back, even if it's going to continue further. Now, the next contradiction is in Rabbi Eliezer, over here, in our b'risa, he says the time it takes to, in the second b'risa, he says the time it takes to pour a cup. That's the first b'risa, he says the time it takes to pour a cup, and in the second one, he says the time it takes for the tree to go back. So that's contradiction, it's not the same amount of uh, time, not the same shear. So my answer is no, it is the same shear. Those are the same length of uh, time. Next, the Gemara asks Rabbi Shua says different things. Here he says the time it takes to drink the cup, and here he says the time it takes to pour the cup. So the Gemara says, no, in each one he means the time it takes both to pour and to drink. That is the time it takes to pour, to mix it, and the time it takes to drink it. In the first verse, when he added the time it takes to drink it, he wasn't saying just the time it takes to drink it, he was adding to the one who said before him. The one before him said the time it takes to pour, he said, and to drink, meaning pour and drink. In our Bryson, when he said the time it takes to pour, he meant to pour, and the drinking that follows, because pouring and drinking go together. The only reason you're pouring it is in order to drink it, that comes right afterwards. So the Bryson says, why don't you just answer that it's the same shear? Why don't you answer that the time it takes to pour and the time it takes to drink is the same? Why do you have to say that in both cases he meant the two of them together? The Bryson says, if you'll say that, then it'll come out that he's saying the same thing as Rabbi Kiva, who said the time it takes to drink the cup. So, therefore, it's got to be that it's not the exact same because the Bryce lists them separately, which implies that they're arguing. Okay. Next, the Gemara discusses a similar contradiction. We'll have the same back and forth answer, uh, question and answer in the opinion of Ben Azai. Ben Azai says it's a time it takes to roast an egg. That's what he says in the first b'risa, the time it takes to roast an egg, and here it says, and here he says, and the time it takes to drink the cup. So the Gemara, so he, he's saying two different shir. Again, the Gemara answers it's the same shir. Um, next, the Gemara asks on Rabbi Akiva. Here he says, the first b'risa, he says the time it takes to swallow the egg, and here he says the time it takes to roast an egg. So the Gemara answer is no, he means the time it takes to roast it and to swallow it. And again, the same thing. Over there he said the time it takes to swallow it, he meant adding on to the one before him who said to roast it, he means to roast it and to swallow. And here where he says just to roast it, he means to roast it as well as to swallow, which is what comes afterwards. Again, the Gemara asks, why don't you just say that, it's, that to roast it and to swallow just the same length of time? Why do you have to say in both cases he meant both shoot them together? The Gemara answers because then he'd be saying the same thing as Ben Azai. Next, the Gemara asks on Rabbi Hudabim Seira. Here he says the time it takes to swallow three eggs, one after the other. And over there he says the time it takes to swallow one egg. The answer is he's going on Rabbi Akiva. He said, according to Rabbi Akiva, who said 
that it's the time of roasting and the time of swallowing together. So he said the time of swallowing itself and the time of swallowing the time of swallowing itself and the time of swallowing three eggs one after another which is the same as the time of roasting and swallowing that is he was commenting you're saying roasting and swallowing one egg you could have just said swallowing three eggs which is the same amount of time as roasting and swallowing one egg all right that concludes the gemara's discussion on the shiurim the gemara now refers back to the list where we said was when Yermia said the time it takes to tie threads which tore in a piece of cloth so Yermia says Rav, uh, Rav Ashi asks are we talking about threads that are close together or further apart which takes longer Yermia leaves it unanswered take with the question stands next Hanin ben Pinchas had said the time it takes to reach her hand to her mouth to take out a something stuck between her teeth again Rav Ashi asked something stuck firmly which is harder to take out or something loose again the Yermia doesn't answer Plea might say the time it takes to reach your hand to the basket to take a loaf of bread. Again, Ravashi asks a loaf of bread which is stuck and hard to get out, or loose and easy to get out. Is it a new loaf of bread or a hard loaf of bread, which is a new loaf or an old loaf? The new one would be softer and harder to grasp. Is it a hot one or a cold one? If it's hot, it will be smoother and more slippery and harder to get out. It will take longer. Is it wheat bread or barley bread? Uh, again, the wheat bread would be smoother and harder to get out. Is it soft bread or hard bread? All these questions remain unanswered. Okay, next, Gemara Chotzev Yitzchak Bar Yosef, the name of Yechanan, who says, why did they each give these different shirim? These Chachamim each gave a different length of time. Why did they give a different one? So he says they're just, each one was just saying based on his own experience. So when I asked, how could that be? Ben Azai is on the list, but now that he wasn't married. If he wasn't married, he never had been, and therefore he would know how long it takes. So Gemara gives, Two answers. The Gemara says, either I'll tell you that he was married and he was separated, so he had had the experience, or you could learn it, you could just say that he it's not an experience he had himself, but he learned it from his Rebbe. Along those lines, you could also say, say to Hashem Lireyav, that he just was given the secret from Shemayim, but it's not an experience that he ever had. Now the Gemara was a Joshua of Rabbi Avira. Sometimes he said in the name of Rav, Ash, of Rav Ami, sometimes he said it in the name of Rav Asi, Anyone who eats bread without washing his hands, it's like he was together with the Isha Zona. Where do you see that? So he quotes the Pasuk and says a Joshua on it. And the Pasuk says, Ki ba'adi Isha Zona at kikar lechem. Veishas ish nefesh yikara tatsut. Numar is going to give Joshua on this. So at first, we're noticing that it says, Ki ba'adi Isha Zona ad kikar lechem. It's like an Isha Zona, a loaf of bread, which he understands as being that the loaf of bread, eating the bread without washing, is like an Isha Zona. It's like being with an Isha Zona. So Rav asks the verses backwards, because it seems to say that being with an Isha Zona is like a loaf of bread. If you're telling me what being, having a loaf of bread without washing is like the Isha Zona, you have to reverse the order. You have to say having a loaf of bread is like being with an Isha Zona. Not Isha Zona is like a loaf of bread. That doesn't make sense. So therefore, Rav says a slightly different shot. Rav says somebody who's together with an Isha Zona in the end is going to be asking for a loaf of bread. Which you read as before, because of the Isha Zona, he's going to be needing Ad Kikar Lechem, needing the loaf of bread. Okay, next on Mark of Rav Zrika, a neighbor of Lazar. Does anybody who's Mizalza, anybody who's behaves disgracefully towards the mitzvah of Natila Sidayim, meaning he doesn't keep it as a matter of course. He's uprooted from the world. Nuhi Barashi said in the name of Rav, first washing, that's Natila Sidayim, when, wash, when one washes before bread, he has to lift his hands upwards, his fingers pointed upwards, so that the water runs down his hands to his arms before he dries them. Well, Mayim that's the water that he washes after the suda to wash off the salt, he should tilt his hands downward so it drips off and forward. The Mark quotes a price that says this as well. Somebody washes his hands, has to lift his fingers upwards. And the reason is because it could be that when he first washed his hands, the water traveled past his wrist. But when he washed his hands the second washing, the water doesn't travel past his wrist. And what it means as follows. When we wash until the time before bread, we do two pourings of the water. The first one takes the tumult off the hands. Now, what tumult is there? So there's Xeras 
Dirabanan that hands always have a halacha of shniyos tumah that is from the fingertips until the wrist are considered to be second level tumah when one washes them with his hands with water the tumah is taken off but the tumah remains in the water the water is tame water and that's why we wash twice the second water will wash off the tame water now what happens though if the first water first washing made his hands wet past the wrist all that water is tummy water then the second washing may only go to the wrist because that's the minimum that means that the water which is left past the wrist was never washed off and there remains tummy water on his hands if he'll then have his hands tilting downward that water will run down his hands into his palms and his fingers and it'll be metami his hands again which is going to defeat the purpose of the washing therefore we should lift his hands upwards so if that water exists it runs down his arms it's not going to touch the bread afterwards However, when it comes to Mayim Achreinim, which is supposed to wash the salt off, we want that to drip away and get away from him, and therefore he should tilt his hands downwards. Okay, says Rabbi Avo, anybody who eats bread without drying his hands, it's like he eats Tomei bread. Why? Because it says, V'yemer Hashem, uh, they ate tummy bread. So tummy bread means disgusting bread because it's getting wet and nasty from the water that he had on his uh, hands and he didn't dry his hands. Okay, now we moves on to the second half of Pasuk we quoted before. We had the uh, so what does it mean? And a married woman, a precious or a valuable soul, will hunt, will pursue. What does that mean? So again, we're going to have a drasha and a question that the Apostle doesn't read properly that way. So the drasha is Rebchil Barab, name of Yochanan, who says, any person who has gases haruach, who is haughty in the end, in the, in the end, he's going to end up tripping up with a married woman. How do you see that? Because it says, Nefeshi kara, a precious soul, meaning somebody who's haughty. So he, he, he's going to be hunted um, because uh, and be tripped up by the Eshesesh. So Rava asks, that's backwards again. It should say, Nefeshi kara. It, sh- it shouldn't say nefeshi kara. First of all, let's just say nefeshi gavaya. Nefeshi kara sounds like it's a good soul. It doesn't sound like it's a haughty soul. Second of all, it should be that he is going to hunt him. What does it mean nefeshi kara? Aishas ish nefeshi kara tatsud. She should hunt him is what it should say. It should say nefeshi kara. It should say he tatsud nefeshi kara. So Rav therefore says a different shot. Is anybody? Who is together with an Ashes Ish, even if he learned a lot of Torah, like it says, Yikara, Yikara referring to Torah learning, he be pinning him. But if you learn even more than the Kayan Gadol, Shenichnas Lefnai Lefnim, the Kayan Gadol who goes inside the Kodesh Hakadashim, still he Titsu Dana Ladina Shal Gehinim, she's going to be hunted down to Gehinim itself. So, Ashes Ish, so how do you read it? Ashes Ish, a uh, married woman, if somebody was involved in that Avera. Nefeshikara Tasud, she's going to hunt down the Nefeshikara, the precious soul, the one who is, she's going to make sure that the punishment is applied properly to even someone who is a Talmud Chacham or a Nefeshikara. Okay, now the Gemara talks more about Gasas Haruach, hoardiness. So Rav Yechon says, anybody who has Gasas Haruach, it's like he's Ovid. Avoidas kechavim, like he worships the stars, like it says, Tevas Hashem kol gvalev is the abomination of Hashem. Anyone who is holy of the heart, and it also says, Leisavit Toyeva el beisachas. So the word Toyeva, Toyeva, Toyavas is in both Gemaras, is in both Psukim, that is, and therefore they are linked together. Now that Rav Yechon said the name of Shem Rayechai, Rav Yechon himself says that anybody who has holiness is like he is kafar beikir. It's like he rejects the basic beliefs. Because it says, Ramlev of Acha, if one's heart becomes hori, Meshachach does Hashem like Acha, they'll forget Hashem. Chama Barchanina said, it's as if he was together with all the Arayas, all the Surei Bia, which are in the Torah, because it says here, Tayavas Hashem, Kogvalev, and by the Arayas it says, Ki is called Hatayeva Yisrakel Asu Agayim. So all those are referred to as Tayeva. Ulu says, it's like he built a 
Bama, like he built the Mizbeach, which is outside the base of Migdash, which is Aser. And the reason we draw that conclusion is because the Torah says, Chidu lachem en ha'odam, asher neshama bi'apai ki ba'me nechshavahu. That is a Pasuk in Yeshaya. So Chidu lachem en ha'odam, asher neshama bi'apai ki ba'me nechshavahu. We read it as ki ba'ma nechshavahu. That is a an illegal Mizbeach. Next, the Umar wants to explain the phrase Yad li Yad lo yinak. What does it mean? Hand to hand will not be cleansed. So the Gemara tries the few explanations here. Rav says anybody who is together with an Eish is Ish, even if he uh, recognized that a Kaddish Baruch Hu is ruling over Shemayim the Arzik Avram Avinu, that is from the word Yad, because it says Harimoisi Yadi El Hashem Kel Elyon Kainish Shemayim the Arz, even if he gave to Kaddish Baruch Hu, as it were, he recognized the Kaddish Baruch Hu's ownership over the world, like Avram who said Harimoisi Yadi, that's Yad Li Yad. Still, he will not be cleansed from being judged in Gehenim if he said, uh, uh, if he was over and over with an Eishas Ish. So Gemara says that uh, the Bear of Shiva asked that that doesn't fit because here it says Yad Liyad. It doesn't say Yadi, but Avvidin it says Yadi. So the Russia is not correct. So the Bear of Shiva says a different Russia, even if he accepted the Torah, like Moshe Abenu, where it says, Miyamino Eish Das Lomai. You mean it, referring to his hand, still he will not be cleansed from the initial Yehenim if he was together with an Eishas Ish, even if he was on that Madriga. So Rav Yechanan asked, it still it shouldn't say Yad Liyad, it should say Yad Miyad, so Miyaminoi. So therefore, Rav Yechanan says, Dim Shad, even if he did Tzedakah in secret, like it says, Matan B'Seiser, so that's Yad Liyad, he gives hand to hand secretly. Still, he won't be cleansed from Dina Shal Gehenim if he was violating Israel's ish.